Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. So, since the last episode, I have been very, very busy. Um, I have been cleaning up this whole section, um, adding facades and things, and just kind of decorating. I added us some additional work tables, and I put gray shulker boxes above them, and the reason being is just because they look a little bit cooler when they open, um, and it makes for a nice cabinet. I guess you could say, uh, it sits above these work tables for just kind of excess storage. And then over here, uh, this has been kicking away. We have a decent amount of UU matter at this point. Nothing, I mean, it's not major, but we're going to speed all this up uh, in due time. And then I put our other two MFSUs that we had, I went ahead and slotted those into this wall here, and they have since filled up. So we have a, a total of 120 million EU storage just on this wall not to mention we have other MFSUs over there um, and then over here I've set up some machines these aren't plugged up we're gonna be plugging these up today but I did go ahead and set up a solid canner an electric furnace three metal formers a macerator and an ore washing plant over on this wall and uh, this is done so now we can make uh, the machine casings from Mechanism, and they are incredibly cheap at 17.5 millibuckets of U matter. So, um, I have not gotten the localization fixed. Um, I tried to update the pack multiple times. It keeps throwing an error saying that it can't get the required files. I'm pretty sure it's due to uh, the mods that were removed from, uh, you know, being Curse Forge available. So, I messed around with that for a while. Um, I've never had issues with localization that I can recall. Um, I don't know if maybe just re-downloading IC2 would fix it or what. Uh, so I've got to figure that out. Um, but I have I have tried and tried to update, but it will not allow me to. But it's whatever. It is whatever. Um, and I also prepped up a ton of things in our inventory. There is a bunch of stuff going on in here, and we're going to be getting into that. Um, that way we can kind of move through today's episode because we're going to be wrapping everything up. You will notice another nuclear reactor back here. I only made the nuclear reactor. It is not currently set up at all. Anyways, um, I got a few things prepped up for today's episode. So let's go ahead and get underway. What we're going to be working on today is kind of wrapping up our current IC2 work. That's not to say that we're done forever with IC2, but I want to get things set up so that they can run kind of on their own, do their own thing. Um, this is just about ran out. I got impatient waiting for it. So we're below 2000 durability. Um, and if I need to wait on it towards the end of the episode, I will. Now, the first thing that I wanna do, let me grab this lapis. And this is pretty straightforward what we're gonna be doing here. We're gonna go ahead and just macerate up this lapis. And over here, we've got a canner, an additional canner set up uh, that's set to enrich liquid and it's getting water fed over from the infinite water source that's here. If we take a look, you can see I did put a facade in there that's pulling that water out and sending it over. And we're gonna get this lapis dust. Now what we're gonna do with this, we can take this lapis dust, drop it into here, and we need at least eight lapis dust, um, unless we're using distilled water. Now we could, we could distill the water. Is Lapis really that valuable to us? That's the question. Because we would just have to set up these solar distillers. Maybe down the road. Uh, right now I'm not that worried about it. Um, and actually out of curiosity, it might even be easier. Let me grab one of these. Can we just scan this? Is that an option? No. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to make it. So, later on we may set up a distillery. Um, that's not going to be our focus for today. I just want to be able to make some overclockers, to be honest. These aren't hard to set up, though. Just sit them down, fill them with water, and they'll distill. Um, I've set them up a number of times in other series. And we'll set one up, you know, at a later date. We'll make a big uh, solar distiller and stuff. But, if we take our lapis and we set that up to start running, um, it's going to start running. Oops. <laughs> I didn't mean to remove that. But it's going to start running. We can also take Nether Lapis and crush it. Uh, so that is an option. I don't know about... Uh, no, we can't Macerate Nether Lapis uh, with the Macerator. So 
but getting an actually editions crusher may not be a bad idea nether lapis is pretty common but um, by that point we'll probably go ahead and just get a distillery um, so anyways that's got some coolant in it now what i want to do at this point let me go ahead and set up a basic energy cube here and we're going to say on the downside you're going to output you can input from all other sides and we're going to go ahead and set up a carpenter that sets right there and we're going to send over I've got to go up to the top here which is a little bit tricky now that things are coming together but we're gonna go around to this side I actually need to turn this uh, I guess really into a facade but uh, oh it's not for some reason I was thinking the carpenter you could see past but you can't so I don't even really need this um, what we're going to do is just run that fluid out from our canner and I'll have to facade this. That's fine. They're not directly next to each other, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, I'll just run these conduits around. And this is going to be a dedicated canning system just for making overclockers. And then later on, we'll add that distilled water to this uh, to feed this canner instead of this water source. So we'll just use an ender tank for that, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and just insert on that side. And we'll pop around and extract over here. So there we go. It's going to pull that um, from there and send it over to the carpenter for us. And we'll just leave this carpenter here. So, And then over here, what we're going to do, we're going to set up a recipe. And we're going to say it looks just like that. And then once we get, uh, I think it's... 3,000 coolant. Um, but it does craft two overclockers at once, so that is a plus. Um, and then later on we can do this method. It's a slightly cheaper method uh, that we can pull off uh, with the advanced carpenter, but we're a little ways off from that. So we'll let that macerator run for a bit. I just want to start being able to produce overclockers, even if it's not the most efficient thing right now, because I am going to want to speed up these recyclers. Uh, here soon so that's in place we'll come back to that here in just a minute now the next thing that I want to do is I want to set up kind of automatic processing of uranium ore and what I'm thinking what I have in mind is I've got this ore washing plant and this macerator over here uh, that are dedicated and for right now we're going to be using this centrifuge and the reason being later on we won't be using the centrifuge, but later on our ore processing will be a little more centralized. This is for kind of manually inputting ores because right now, you know, I don't, I don't have automatic ores coming in from any source. Um, so long term, this system won't be used, but for now, it's just going to make my life a bit easier and it's a fairly easy setup. So let's go ahead and we're going to say that this macerator is going to accept items on the, uh, let's go with like the line channel. Okay, and it's going to extract on the, actually it's not going to extract at all, my bad. Um, it's not going to extract at all. And you will notice there is a uh, infinite water source down below this ore washing plant supplying it uh, with liquid. Then what we're going to do, <clears throat> our macerator can accept on the lime channel. Um, we'll say that this is our uranium uh, insert. Yeah, so let's go ahead, pop down underneath here I've ran some conduits that are going to connect up and our shulker box is right over here so let me just go ahead and run a conduit line that connects over to this conduit line um, you'll notice this one kind of spans around we're going to be hitting this one up a bit because it's going to be our main uh, basically our main conduit line for our reactors so let's go ahead and set this over to the lime channel. And we're going to say always active. You can always extract uh, from that shulker box. So then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to come in and just take uranium ore after I've mined it or whatever, dump it into this shulker box, and it's going to get sent over to the mass wave. So awesome. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take ourselves an ejector upgrade. Let's just shift right click downwards. And we're going to apply that to this macerator. So once it finishes, it's going to eject. Is that better? Yeah, okay. Click up and then it'll send it down. That's right. 
Um, <clears throat> so it's going to start sending it down to the oil washing plant and that's going to start washing it. After which point it'll need to be centrifuged. So what we're going to do is we are going to add a channel and we're going to say that uh, you're going to do this on the, let's just say the pink channel for simplicity's sake. So on the pink channel, you're going to send your items out. And you can see we're going to get small lead, we're going to get stone dust, and we're going to get that purified uranium. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to our centrifuge right here. And we are going to say that, um, well, one second, let me grab just because I think we're going to set a filter for this. Let me grab some of that purified uranium real quick because our paint channel is actually going to handle a couple things. So I'd rather go ahead and just filter this. So let's set this to the pink channel. Let's drop in a basic filter. We're not going to have a lot of things going into this. So a basic one will be fine. And we're just going to say purified uranium. You can accept that. And we're going to go ahead and say that you can insert. So there we go. Purified uranium gets shot over to here and the centrifuge starts running. Now at this point, one thing I would like to, I think, go ahead and do. Now nah, I'm not going to do it just yet. I was going to say I might apply a redstone signal to this centrifuge so that it stays heated up all the time. Not going to do that just yet. Later on down the road, I will do that. Once I have all these reactors running and more stuff happening, right now it's just like occasionally I'll come back with some uranium from you know from mining or whatever dump it into here and it's going to run the centrifuge a little bit also occasionally this will run out of fuel and those fuel rods will get ran out and the centrifuge will run them we'll just hold off on uh, giving it a redstone signal for now um, so items are going to come into the centrifuge and they're going to make this uranium here and we're going to extract this on the let's say the yellow channel so you can extract on the yellow channel, uh, this stuff right here. And we're gonna pop back over here and we're gonna set up another machine real quick. And that is going, and it's actually going to be uh, set up up here in fact. We are going to set ourselves up a crafter. And before I do that, let me go ahead and just drop down basic energy cube right there. And then we're gonna put a crafter, and this is a tier two crafter. It is getting power from that basic energy cube. Um, and I went with a crafter 2 too. That way we have access to, of course, four different recipes here. And what we're going to do at this point, um, we're actually going to have a couple channel lines that are gonna connect to this. Because we're gonna be doing a couple things to this crafter. So let's go ahead, the item conduits already connect there. But I also want them to come up and connect there as well. Now the very first thing we're going to do, um, which I'm going to set my filters before I actually start running any of this, but let's grab some of that and let's grab some of that as well. I'm going to go ahead and grab that also. We're going to go ahead and set up our crafter to accept uranium-238, uranium-235. And I'm going to do six slots for the 238 and three slots for the 235. Um, and we're going to go ahead and, well actually let's wait to set up any recipes just yet until we get all of our filters set up. Uh, let's go ahead and pop back up here and from our ore washing plant we are getting these small, uh, these small lead dusts. Let's go ahead and grab these. And we're going to put these in here and this was, uh, see the ore washing plant was inserting on the pink channel. So let's go ahead and do small lead dust. We'll go ahead and fill a few slots, really just to take up slots to be perfectly honest. Um, and we're going to say, well I'm not going to do my insert, my colors just yet, so we'll leave that alone. And then another thing I'd like to do, let me go ahead and set up one additional machine real quick. And we're going to set up the isotope separator. And what we're going to use this for, let me pop over, let me get some uranium ingots real quick because I got to looking and we're going to be able to really use our uranium more than I originally thought by kind of a, a system that alters it and then changes it back. Um, it's actually quite a bit of work, but uh, it'll be worth it, I think, just because uranium is a little bit rare for us at the moment. So if we take these uranium ingots 
and we drop them into the isotope separator, they're going to split down into uranium-238 and tiny clumps of uranium-235. These are the nuclear craft versions. And the nice thing about the isotope separator is we don't need to transfer our EU to RF. It just, it just straight up accepts the EU, so we don't need an energy cube or anything like that uh, to do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set this up on, um, let's see, we're going to set this up on the, what, the pink channel? Yeah, we're pulling out on the pink channel from that. So let's go ahead and set this to a matching color. So we're going to extract on pink. Um, pink's going to be pretty much entirely filtered, so it's not a big deal. Um, and it's also going to connect to some drawers, which we're going to get into here in just a little bit. So that's being pulled out. We're going to go ahead and grab some of this 235, and we are going to slot this in. And we're going to go ahead and say that you can also insert, it's going to be, we're going to go with the light blue channel, which we'll get to using that here in just a minute. And how's this doing? Doing all right. Um, now what I want to do, and hopefully this is easy to follow along. I know we're kind of jumping around, but we're setting all this up um, to make it work. Now I'm going to add, at this point, we're going to add a little melter setup. Now you could go with a seared tie or a sear uh, smeltery or something like that, but we're just going to be going with a melter. It's cheaper and it's fairly easy to set up and everything. And we're going to set this guy up um, just right back here should be fine. We're going to set it up right behind our, this is actually connected. Um, I just used a facade, ran it through the floor here. So that's up there is our reactor uh, that's currently running up there. So, um, but we're going to set up our melter right here. Item conduit can link in there. We're going to have a seared tank setting right below it. Um, we're going to have, I'll put it in a chest. Um, we're just going to hide this beneath the floor because it honestly, it just didn't fit anywhere up there, uh, to be perfectly honest. So we're going to go ahead and put an ingot cast into this. And we are going to just add a pressurized fluid conduit. This is what's going to pull the liquid uh, from this. We're just going to say extract and insert. That's fine. Um, and then we're going to link over our item conduits, not our fluid conduits, but our item conduits. We're going to link these over like so. And this is going to extract. And which color did I set it as? I've already forgotten. It is light blue to insert on to the isotope separator. So we are going to be extracting from this on that light blue channel, always active. The melter, we're gonna set this to a channel magenta uh, for the melter. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna set up another mechanical squeezer, which of course we've set these up before, it's nothing new, and we're gonna set this up uh, right here, and right above it we're gonna set up an energy cube uh, maybe not maybe not connecting to both of those though. I don't really like that idea. So let's do uh, Let's do here Okay, so that's gonna get energy and we are going to say that um, I think it's gonna be that side can output. Yeah, there we go And that's still getting power great. So the mechanical squeezer is running and then we're going to set up an inter chest line and we're just going to run down a conduit here and set it up right there. Inter chest orange, orange, orange is set up for netherrack, which currently I don't have netherrack automated, but luckily netherrack is super easy to farm. I've been having to farm a bit of it from time to time, but we are going to be automating it in due time with essence. I do believe. I think that's how we're going to automate it. There's some other methods, but, uh, I don't think there's anything I particularly want to do for netherrack. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to insert. We're going to extract. Don't need any fancy coloring because it's a kind of a separated system. So oh, and we can't uh, we can't insert from the bottom. Okay, hold up here. We will in that case insert through the top. That is fine by me. So extract always active. Insert. Go, go, gadget, mechanical squeezer. 
All right, so that's gonna start producing lava. Now this thing will quickly back up. The melter, of course, is not going to consume all that much lava. So we're just gonna attach a conduit here that extracts, conduit here that inserts. So once it runs down that nether rack, it will insert into the melter, giving it some lava and allowing the melter to run. Nothing fancy. Okay, so that's the melter setup. And that's actually a big chunk of our items that we had uh, sitting here. And there goes the first bucket of lava. Yay. All right, so then what we're going to do, let's pop back inside. Let's see how our reactor is handling things. We're almost out of durability. Beautiful. All right, now let me pop over. Let me go get some copper real quick. What we're going to do, and what's really, really nice about this setup is the only input it's going to take is a little bit of copper and uranium, you know, at least on occasion, it's going to, it's going to eat uranium, but it's not going to eat as badly as if we didn't have it set up this way. So that's a plus. What we're going to do is this gray shulker box right here. We're going to throw copper into that and we're going to add just a little dedicated line. We're going to say that you extract on the, see, we're already using magenta. Let's say orange channel and you, you're going to insert on the orange channel. We are going to extract also. Yeah. Anyways, it's going to start running. Um, actually, this needs to be set to rolling. It's going to start running that copper and making us copper plates. All right. And then it's going to send those copper plates out. Go ahead and just grab two of these. And we're going to go ahead and just slot these into the crafter. Let's just pop out here. Got the crafting table available. Um, let's go ahead and just craft up a nuclear uranium uh, for right now. And this stuff, um, what we're going to do, let me, uh, let me go ahead and set this to wire mill. Let me run one of these iron plates real quick and get us a crafting fuel rod. And this crafting fuel rod is going to get ran through the solid canner. Now at this point, what I need to do, um, there's a couple ways you could do this. Um, one option is to kind of have it set up with specific count filters and all that. So you only have a specific amount of a given item um, in a specific place, which of course is very doable um, for us at the moment. But I'm just gonna go with a really easy method where we have a stack and everything else is considered excess. So what we're going to do, we're gonna pop over, um, basically locking down a certain spot with a stack. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add a stack of iron to the metal former. Um, it's gonna run this into plates. And we're gonna say that the, um, let's say we're extracting to the crafter on the pink channel uh, we're extracting from the centrifuge, correct? Let's see the other place that we're extracting from, which is on the uh, the yellow. The crafter is getting pink and yellow. Yeah, and pink is the filtered line. Yellow is a little bit more freeform. So we're going to say that the yellow channel is the channel that these are going to be extracting on. Um, so let's go ahead and say that this metal former you're going to extract on yellow and just always active. Um, and then this metal former that's making the plates is also going to be extracting on uh, yellow, always active. And it's going to be inserting from basically from the electric furnace. Um, so we're going to set this to the white channel uh, for the insert. And I'll explain why that is here in just a little bit. And this, you're going to be extracting uh, on the white channel, always active. And uh, we're also going to add a filter actually in here because this is going to need to be filtered, in fact. And we're going to say you can only accept iron um, on this. We're going to be extracting from the electric furnace to one other location. So, all right. I know this is kind of crazy all over the place, but. Hopefully you guys are keeping up um, with everything going on here. 
And over here, we're gonna go ahead and set this up even though we're not going to activate it just yet. But we're gonna say yellow, you can insert, and it's gonna be a priority of negative five in this case. And this is actually gonna be the one that takes these plates and runs them into crafting fuel rods. And then from there, we are going to say that you extract on the black channel, always active, and you're going to insert into the solid canner, so black, insert, and there we go. And of course, this can't go into this slot, so that's great. So um, it makes these crafting fuel, these fuel rods for us and sends them to the solid canner. The solid canner is then going to be extracting on the uh, yellow line which of course is then going to feed over to the crafter once we finish setting up um, all of our filters. Now let me go ahead and run this and I believe these stack but let me just double check and make sure at this point. We're about to activate the crafter and let it just kind of go and do its thing. Um, I'm just kind of getting at least you know the items in there that need to be in there. Um, before we do that, so if I throw that into there, you'll, yeah, it should stack. If it's running right now, that means they should stack. So, okay, so we'll go ahead and slot these over into here, and we're going to go ahead and slot iron plates in here also. Um, and then let me just go ahead and make a little bit of extra space. Um, honestly, two stacks is plenty. I probably will never have that many built up at once. So we're going to be able to store up to a stack of copper plates, stack of iron plates, two stacks of uranium fuel rods, which will never happen unless I throw more iron into the system because right now there's just not enough iron. Um, and then we'll be able to have six stacks of nuclear uranium, three stacks of small uranium, uh, eight stacks of lead, and five stacks of tiny clumps of 235. Okay, at this point I want to go ahead and, uh, well, let's go ahead and remember the current items. So that way if I remove things, they're going to stay. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up a couple of recipes here. All of these are going to be going into the external buffer. So the first recipe is this. And we're going to go ahead and just apply that. So it's going to make some nuclear uranium. The next recipe I want to teach it is this, but using our tiny clumps of uranium-235. That gives us another method for crafting our nuclear uranium. Now next up, I want to teach it this right here and apply. And then lastly, I want to teach it uh, that, that, that makes a quad fuel rod and apply. All right, now what I want to do, let's go ahead and set this up. Um, the electric furnace we are going to be inserting on um, and let me go ahead and set up we're basically inserting on pink and we are inserting on yellow so we're gonna get uh, some iron plates some copper plates some small uranium that's all well and good and then our iron plates okay at this point if I need to add a little bit more iron to the system, we will, just to make sure there's no issues, but it looks like it's running good. Um, and yeah, and we've got a stack of iron plates. So at this point, any additional iron plates, because we've got them sending over at a higher priority over into the crafter, every additional iron plate is going to go into this metal former. So we're gonna go ahead and say that you can insert into this one, which is gonna make for us uranium fuel rods once we well it's going to send it over to the solid canner which we can then make uranium fuel rods from now over at the electric furnace i want to uh, set up some extraction colors here um, basically our crafter is going to need to send out pulverized lead nuclear uranium and quad uranium fuel cells these three things so we are going to be extracting on, um, we will be using the black channel because we're inserting that uranium over here. 
which I'm gonna go ahead and say that uh, this is gonna be filtered and let me go ahead and remember the current items so that way uh, we can move those things around um, go ahead and insert on the black line this is gonna be filtered you can only accept that nuclear uranium and we're going to say that you can extract on black always active so it should pull out that nuclear uranium there it goes awesome and then we are going to add another thing really I think the black channel could probably handle everything for us we're gonna say that you can insert on the black channel since we're using filters and we're gonna say you insert pulverized lead insert and there we go there goes the pulverized lead into the electric furnace and it's gonna smelt and make lead ingots which we're basically just gonna store up is what we're gonna do with those um, and now I think at this point all of these machines are fully plugged up now and running there is one additional thing that we're gonna add uh, basically plugged up to the electric furnace and stuff but we'll get to that here in just a minute and then we've got our quad uranium fuel cells let me go ahead and remember the current items now because we do have those slotted in and it is crafting those now the quad uranium fuels uh, fuel rods what I want to do with these these kind of have an important role here we're gonna pop down underneath the floor here I'll tell you what we're gonna set it up right uh, tell you what we're gonna set it up right over here so we're going to add a filter this is gonna be on the black channel and we're gonna add in a filter and we're gonna run some redstone conduit here in a minute but we're gonna say that you can only insert quad uranium fuel rods and we'll go ahead and say that you can insert those so there we go they're gonna build up in this chest down below the floor we're gonna say that you can extract on the red channel this is what we're gonna do I don't think we're using the red channel for anything but actually just to be on the safe side let's go ahead and change it to like brown I know we're not using brown for anything so you can extract on the brown channel however we're going to add a reading coming off of this and you know what I did not mean for a chest I lied <laughs> I wasn't planning on a chest anyways because um, it would change up the amounts we're gonna put down a comparator and we're going to place down a hopper instead and that's where we're gonna be inserting those quad uranium fuel rods into and we're gonna go ahead and put down 16 cobblestone and basically what that means is it is not going to emit a signal of two until we have at least seven quad uranium fuel rods which is important and actually while I'm up here let me check on our macerator which should be done it is go ahead and throw that into the canner get that running and then we should get some overclockers out of that um, by the time we check it next not a lot but enough for the time being um, so for example if right now we have 18 items but if I was to add five um, energy conduits now I have a power of one here I've got a total of uh, power two redstone right um, and that's important if I was to add uh, just say four I do not have a redstone power of two um, it is right there it is uh, 23 items that gives me that second level redstone which is important because we need at least seven quad uranium fuel rods in this hopper um, before I let anything run right and so then what we're going to do uh, let me go get some redstone conduit real quick and let me check is our reactor out of durability it is we have depleted quad uranium fuel rods and this has now stopped running which is okay it means we're gonna build up on scrap boxes so that's cool and we're gonna handle some of these like loose items here um okay yeah I haven't I don't have enough because this crafter used up my iron so let me throw another stack in there another stack of iron another stack will definitely do it it's just uh, right now because um, it's gonna be storing some of that in the form of quad uranium fuel rods um, we will get some iron back from this which we'll talk about here in just a minute but um, I do need this making more uranium fuel rods for us so all right, let me go get some redstone conduit real quick okay and let's actually run it out this direction 
because it'll just save me on cables. I don't really know why I'm <laughs> running it in that direction, but and I know this episode's going to be running a little bit longer, but uh, I hope you guys don't mind. But I want us to be able to get this done today. Uh, so let's run our cable out here. We're going to say that you input on red. That's fine. And we need to come up right here let's go ahead and just disconnect oh, oops disconnect this line and what we're going to do we're going to bring this up to here and we're going to say that you can only extract and the color that we're going to be extracting on is the centrifuge color so the centrifuge is feeding in on pink so we are also going to be feeding in on pink. So let's go ahead and set this. And we're gonna go ahead and grab one of these depleted quad uranium cells. And we're gonna say the extract also is going to have a filter. And it's only going to accept quad uranium fuel rods. And then the insert is going to have a filter. And that filter is only going to accept quad uranium fuel rods okay um, and this is going to be inserting on basically the same line that the chest is extracting on or the hopper um, which is extracting on brown always active and yeah and it's only going to be able to insert those quad fuel rods so it's not going to try and mess with the cobblestone uh, because brown's only being used by these that are filtered, so we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to say you can insert on brown. I'm not going to set that just yet, um, but we're going to say that you can extract on pink, but only with a signal on the red line. All right, so at the moment, I don't know how many quad fuel rods that we do have, but... Let's take a quick look. Uh, we just have two at the moment. Let's inserting on black. Oh, you know why they're not feeding over? I did not add them to the filter. That would explain it. So let's do that. There we go. Now it's going to start working. <laughs> Whoops. So that's going to start making our fuel rods for us. Which we'll see start going into here. And making those quad rods for us now while that's working its way up uh, what I want to do I did make a couple one by two drawers and we're just gonna place these in um, over on this side will be good let's go ahead and do that and I'm gonna go ahead and run these down like that and we're going to go ahead and add a couple conduits. Don't want you to connect. Don't want you to connect. Bring that down. And we're going to be grabbing a few different items. We're going to be grabbing lead, um, which is going to be on the white extract. We're going to be grabbing uranium-238, which is on the pink extract. And I'm going to set a chest up right here okay so the white line can accept lead into this chest the uh, the pink line can accept uranium 238 and we're gonna go ahead and set up an extract on an unused color from this uh, so we're gonna go with blue and it's always gonna be active uh, so you can always extract these things and it's gonna send it over to these frame drawers so uranium 238 can go in that one lead can go in that one and just start building up and we're going to say that you can insert on the blue channel there we go uh, stone dust that is also on the pink channel um, so let's go ahead and grab a little bit of that stone dust add that to the pink filter you can do stone dust it's going to send it over here and we'll go ahead and slot stone dust and we'll say that you can insert on the blue line. So that should come into here. Oh, you know what though? I didn't connect the rest of this line over. Let me do that real quick. Okay, so there's our stone dust. We got 46 in there now. 
Awesome. And so now we only have one other byproduct left to deal with, which we'll get to in just a minute. Uh, if we take a look here, this has not pulled that out just yet. Where are we at on fuel rods at the moment? We are actually at eight. Oh, you know what though? I don't think that I set... Yeah, this has a filter. Let me add quad depleted quad fuel rods. There we go. Now it's pulling out the depleted quad fuel rods because it has a redstone signal. Um, if I was to, for example, uh, if I was to pull these out and then I came over and added these just to make sure that this is all working correctly. It's still set to active with signal. If we added them in now, well, I can't add quad fuel rods to that. Okay. We're going to have to trust that it's working. <laughs> We're going to trust it. So let me just throw these back into the centrifuge so that can start running those down and what we're going to do we're going to add these back into there so we're going to say that you can now insert on the brown channel quad uranium fuel rods which really i guess i don't need this filter truth be told um oh yeah because the cobblestone though i don't think it can insert cobblestone so i don't think it's really a big issue but i'll leave it in there um you know just to be on the safe side or whatever so that's going to start running again and creating us power all right so if we pop back over to the centrifuge which is still heating up and I think that's really the last bit we have to set up because basically when it has seven or more rods it extracts the depleted ones from the current reactor cycles them into the centrifuge puts in the new cells which immediately start running once these cells are centrifuged we're going to take the materials out divvy them up uh, to where they need to go which we still have to set up the melter which we're about to do I mean, I'll show you how that's going to be set up. And then the materials get sent over here. All this is already set up. So lead and iron. We're going to add iron to this, uh, to this filter. Because when depleted fuel rods are centrifuged, they create pulverized iron. Which we can then smelt. And then they go back into making plates, giving us back the exact same seven iron that we spent to make a quad fuel rod. Um... Then the uranium is going to get sent around. And the way we're going to handle that, let me actually grab this stuff because I've got this stuff lying around. We're going to go ahead and just drop that into there. This goes into there. And the way this is going to work is if this is filled up like it is currently, um, any additional uranium-238 after that point is going to get sent to the melter. Um, it's the way that we're going to handle it. So... Um, the uranium-238 is going to be coming from both the ore washing, or not the ore washing plant. Well, it's just going to be coming from the centrifuge, right? It gets centrifuged either way, and that's where it's created. So that's the only point that we need to send over to the melter. Um, so what we're going to do, the centrifuge extraction line is yellow. And so we are going to... Let's add a chest in. We're going to be using a chest basically to store uh, excess so we don't have a bunch of buildup uh, from this. So we're going to set the chest up right here. We are going to say that you can insert, using a filter, you can insert on yellow. The priority is going to be negative 5, and you can only insert uranium 238. And we'll go ahead and do that. Chances are it's going to get some. Yeah because that centrifuge has finished finished running something uh, at the moment. And then that can then extract and send over on the magenta line, which is going to take it to the melter. So extract is always active. Go ahead and start shipping that stuff over to the melter. The melter's not going to be super fast. That's okay. And as soon as it runs that uranium-238, it's going to come out as an ingot, get pulled out and sent to the the isotope separator. Um, so for example, like right now we have 36 uranium-238 uh, at present. Now the other thing that we need to do, if we take a look inside of here, we are getting the pulverized iron. Let's go ahead and grab that out and let's add it to, yeah there we go, that has now kicked on and begun running. Let's go ahead and add pulverized iron into the electric furnace, which Oh, it's not going to pull in right now because it's needs to extract on black. 
for that, which I'll handle that in just a moment. And then we're going to go ahead and add, we're going to take this small plutonium, plutonium, and we got a quest complete from that. We're going to add plutonium to that, and then let's pop down here. That's going to be pulled out from the centrifuge, which is that yellow line. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. Over here, we're going to go ahead and just, let's see, let's add a conduit line here. This is going to insert on the yellow. And let me go make two more filters real quick. Okay, we'll go ahead and add in our filter, plutonium. We don't need to send that anywhere else because that's just going to be kind of our prize for all of this. Um, and really one of the best things ever. Um, it's super useful. And we're going to be using it as, about as fast as we can get it. So we've got 28 pieces. I think that is all of it. Yeah. And then we just have to do the pulverized iron. Now the pulverized iron, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use this same buffer chest. And I'm going to say that on the yellow line, you can also insert pulverized iron. It's not going to be able to go over there because, you know, we don't have a slot saved for that um, on the blue channel. So what we're going to do is uh, the electric furnace is running on black with a filter. I believe it is. I think everything on the black channel is filtered. Melter still kicking away. We did throw a lot of uranium into that, so gonna be kicking away for a minute and if we take a look here we have six quad uranium fuel rods so that is working um, yeah it looks like all the stuff on the black channel is filtered so let's go ahead we're gonna say that you can extract may not need this other filter then on black pulverized iron goes out and has hit the electric furnace which is now smelting it okay and that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's all cycling. So basically we throw in new uranium here. It gets sent over, macerated or washing centrifuge. Now it's in the system, right? Which it'll go to this crafter and sit in there or whatever, whatever it needs to do. This chest, we need to keep this stocked with some copper. So if we keep copper plates. We only need uh, a total of 14 per rotation of our, um, our reactor fuel rods. Um, only 14 copper and that's really the only input material beyond just whatever uranium we're not producing which will be substantial but um, we will need to input uranium into this. Um, iron goes up here and it's constantly cycled back through because we always have iron uh, and it never wastes iron. We get back as much as we spend and then it fills this up with iron plates. Excess goes into here makes our fuel rods which once the crafter makes the nuclear uranium it turns them into uh, you know the single rods which are then sent back to the crafter crafter takes those crafts them into quad cells also crafts the enriched uranium and any lead byproduct from our ore washing system it takes and sends that to the electric furnace to smelt and get sent out of the system and then um, once stuff is done running, it goes in the centrifuge, like the depleted fuel rods, they get broken down and store, the plutonium gets stored, the uranium goes back into the system, and the iron goes back into the system. And then um, any excess uranium 238 beyond this gets sent to the melter, melts it down to an ingot form, sends it to the isotope separator to give us. Um, that uranium-235 and uranium-238 nuclear craft version. So the 238 is sent out of the system. We have almost two stacks of that. We have 11 ingots of lead, 46 stone dust, and 28 plutonium. So hopefully that all makes sense. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I know this episode's running long. Just a couple other things that I want to cover just really, really fast. Uh, we'll probably have around an hour episode, but that is okay. Uh, we do have our overclocker upgrades. A stack of lapis for four. We'll make it better later, but we just don't have the time today. I'm going to go ahead and add some additional overclockers into these, which will speed these up slightly. Also, we did finish a quest here in Nuclear Craft for that plutonium. Let's go ahead and get our loot chest, as well as a quest down here in Nuclear Craft for getting the isotope separator. It's actually a super cheap craft. 
uh, we just now needed one. We happen to need one. So um, we're going to go ahead and open these two loot chests. We got spaghetti and meatballs. And we got insanium essence. Not bad. Um, and now the last thing that I want to do is we're going to go ahead and finish out this quest line. We're going to make ourselves some RTG fuel. RTG fuel is crafted with nuclear plutonium, which is, oh, we're not going to have enough, are we? No, we're not. Yeah, I can't mix and match. Oh, that's too bad. Um, but I think we can generate plutonium if we scan it. Yes. We can create plutonium through the use of uh, UU matter. I'm going to go ahead and get our dense iron plates real quick. And we actually do have the plutonium uh, to make this. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it out of plutonium. And we will get um, the RTG pellets. Um, it is pretty expensive on UU matter, if I recall, to create plutonium. But we're going to be making a lot of UU matter. And it's going to get progressively faster and faster um, as we go. So, yeah, we'll probably just keep making RTG um, and making plutonium through that. But uh, we'll go ahead and get this running real quick. I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with this system. Um, I think it's going to work out nicely for us. This will build back up because it's going to prioritize sending it here over the melter. Um, but I'm not, I'm honestly not too concerned about uranium 238 because it is so common. Um, I will, though, probably go ahead and grab out like a stack of this. I think that'll be fine. Um, basically, each one of these that we melt down, we do get a 235, uh, which is the more rare, you know, the more rare version. So. And that is done scanning. It's only 23.69 millibuckets of UU matter uh, to make plutonium. So that's actually not too bad, truth be told. Um, now, I think, I don't know if there's really any benefit to doing this, but um, I believe we can also scan the larger version, which is the version that we'll actually be using. And I also believe that we can scan dense iron plates as well. But I'm going to go ahead and just scan the nuclear plutonium for the time being. There we go. There's our dense iron plates. And... We're going to go ahead and craft out one of these RTG fuels, RTG pellets. There we go. And that is going to complete the IC2 quest line for us. So that is now 100% done. Though we're not totally done with IC2, of course. And we got a pineapple ham. And this is going to be used for the Void Ore Miner Controller Tier 6, as well as Creative Power Cells creative generators, and solar array controller tier 6. Okay. That's all going to be pretty light in. And in addition, if we pull up the, um, if we pull up the RT generator here, um, I'm going to go ahead and craft this out real quick. Okay. That was easy and painless. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to be automating these in due time because I know last time through on Enigmatica we had, I don't even know how many of these things, like hundreds of these things. Um, we're going to go ahead and I think I want it to be, I think I want this one to be dedicated to the matter generator. Just always pump your power into the matter generator. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set it up right here and we're going to drop this RTG pellet into there. And that's going to start producing some power, for example. Like if I was to break this off, so you can see it a little bit better. Break this off for just a minute here. You could say that we're generating uh, some power from the RTG pellet. Of course, we're sending it pretty much directly back into making um, more UU matter. Um, but the more of this that we stack for UU matter, the more UU matter that we're going to get. And basically the more RTG pellets that we get to make. Um, eventually getting it so fast that it's making you matter insanely fast. And then we'll have, eventually we'll have four reactors running. Not really much point in pushing for that right this second, but eventually, eventually we will have that. And it's 
0.2 millibuckets of UU matter for the large uh, plutonium. So technically it's just slightly more efficient, and I mean slightly, um, because crafting these out, crafting nine of these out, would be 213.21 UU matter. So you're saving 0.01 UU matter, uh, but in all honesty, that's the one that we're gonna be using because the smaller version, I don't guess we're gonna have uh, too much use for. We can make plutonium blocks with it. Uh, so there is that, but yeah, I mean, we're really just gonna be turning it into the large plutonium um, to make RTG pellets. Maybe eventually later on we'll make nuclear mocks, but I don't know, we'll see. We shall see. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to, yeah, for right now I'm gonna go ahead and just set this to repeat. Let it start making plutonium, because that's what I really want from this right this second. Or maybe we'll just do single uh, instead. Just run one and then just let this build up and you know, we'll go from there. Because I've actually got enough plutonium here that if I ran this, made one, I could make another RTG pellet, uh, increasing the amount of power that we're generating. And I'm gonna go ahead and lock that in, um, and lock that in. Now, later on, I'll probably just set this to repeat and just keep pumping out plutonium. Um, but right now, I wanna hold out because depending on what we tackle next, we might want the machine frames from this because of course we can craft various machine frames uh, using the replicator which is quite nice. So we'll want just a bit of UU matter saved up. Um, but before too long, we'll be generating a lot of UU matter. So, uh, but anyways, I know that it's about wrapping up point four this episode, probably well over wrapping up point for this episode, but we had a lot to cover today. But we have now finished the IC2 quest line. We're gonna move on from IC2 in the next episode, but we are still gonna be doing IC2. Um, a little bit here and there, maybe setting up some additional setups. I want to do the distilled water so we can make overclockers cheaper. Just lots of different things um, that we still want to tackle. But we're done. We're going to take a break from IZ2 for now uh, and move on to our next project. Which I will say that next episode we're going to get into using these painters. Um, we didn't really get a chance today. We don't have time. But it's not important for what we're doing today either. So we'll get into using those because we're basically going to start siphoning some of our IC2 power over uh, to our farms to get those really up and running well. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.